Assalamu alaikum everybody. I hope and pray that everyone that everyone is doing all right and fine on this blessed and beautiful night here live from the holy city of Karbala. I gotta say I'm super excited. Uh, alhamdulillah, coming to you live, 19th episode of the special Ramadan series, uh, of course on hashtag LNT. But tonight's topic uh, is about something that we do only when we're going through hardships and forget about it. When, uh, when everything's going all right and uh, going smoothly. But I'll, I'll leave you guys think about that for a sec while we go and check out what's trending and be back very soon. Welcome back, dear viewers. Hope, inshallah, you're enjoying your night tonight. Um, but um, special news for the Muslims living in, uh, in America. Donald Trump uh, is hosting a dinner uh, at the White House, trying to celebrate Ramadan, uh, inviting Muslim uh, leaders and stuff uh, in, in the U.S. This event uh, was not held last year, uh, breaking uh, nearly two decades uh, of uh, Bill Clinton, John W. Bush, um, George W. Bush, John, uh, George W. Bush, uh, and Barack Obama. So um, he also did say last year, he also wished everyone a Ramadan uh, Mubarak uh, to all the Muslims. Uh, living in America. It's, it's, it's a good step. It's a good step that Trump is taking. But um, what else is trending? There's been a auction for about five days online, five days in a row, uh, to raise funds uh, for the homeless, for the sick, for HIV, hepatitis C treatments, um, a dinner with uh, Warren Buffett, um, just to uh, raise, and they've raised 29 million dollars to glide uh, a, ch a charity foundation just a, a simple dinner with him uh, auction went for 3.3 million dollars uh, for, for five days crazy crazy they raised 29 million dollars uh, just to have or 19 auctions for 29 million dollars um, just to have a dinner with this guy to raise uh, funds but uh, anyways let's go and jump into tonight's topic because uh, you know me, I love to talk about such uh, topics. You guys don't know what it is yet? Well, stay tuned. We're back very short. Now, let's be honest, guys. When we're healthy, living life perfectly, everything's going well with the family and work, we neglect one simple thing, and that's prayer. Rarely do you find a healthy person praying for his health because really he's living at the moment when was the last time you seen an employed person praying for a job because he's living in the moment where he has a job now, however if the, if the table was turned and uh, things start to go downhill person isn't having that luck anymore arguments with the wife and with the family messages coming to me right now on whatsapp for the show don't send it to me send it to uh, hashtag and, and see you soon uh, but the car needs frequent maintenance your son's catching a bad cold everything was going wrong you feel like you're depressed anxiety goes up all of those when they happen not all of a sudden not all together but if they happen within a year within a month within a week God forbid you start turning to God you go back to God, praying to Him, so everything goes back to normal. This is instinct within human nature. But how do we know if our prayers are actually going to be answered or not? Why do we only pray during the times of hardship? And this goes out to me, so I have to answer that tonight, along with you guys. And that's your question for tonight. In three, two, one, mashallah. How effective is prayer? How simple question, how effective is prayer? Do you think it's effective? Participate. If you think it's not effective, also participate. How? By opening your phone, going to WhatsApp, dialing the number shown right now, plus 964-774-067-1836, and save that number in your contact. Hashtag LNT show, so you can get the, the daily updates. But um, you can participate by calling, texting, sending a voice message. We are, we are also live on Facebook. So you guys can go watch us there, give that thumbs up, share, like, 
do the, all the good stuff because whoever participates in tonight's show by commenting on the live feed on Facebook, by participating, by calling, texting, and sending a voice message to that same WhatsApp number, your names will be written down on this slip, on this sticky note right here, placed in this fishbowl for a chance to win a free trip to Karbala exclusive on our house along with many many giveaways to those who also participate now let's take a very quick break and come back to talk about more of how effective is prayer once again we do welcome everybody for joining us tonight now a lot of people when they say you know what I want to find God I want to know where God is so I can go and ask Him for what I need. You know, I, 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 I need to know how close is God to me. So when I do call Him or when I do ask Him for something, I know where He is so I can go to Him and, and, and seek His, His, uh, uh, His attention towards me. God needs to pay attention to me. As a lot of people say. Now in chapter 2, verse 186, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questions that I haven't asked you, O Muhammad, concerning me. Indeed, I am near. I respond to the invocation of the supplicant when he calls upon me. So let them respond to me by obedience and believe in me that they may be rightly guided. Chapter 2, verse 186. This is very, very important for us to answer the questions I just asked a bit ago. Now, the same verse, the, exa the exact same verse, but in different words, is found in Psalms 145, 18 to 20. The exact same verse in the Bible. And I quote, The Lord is near to all who call on Him. To all who call on Him in truth, He fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. He fears, He hears, them, he hears their cries and saves them. So, the exact same verse in the Quran in chapter 2 is found in Psalms in the Bible, 145, 18 to 20. But we did receive a call, we were getting a call from... Muntadar from Canada. Assalamu alaikum Muntadar, welcome to hashtag LNT. And the Alaykum. question for tonight. Salam, brother. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How are you? Your question for tonight. How effective is prayer? Alhamdulillah. First of all, Abdullah Ajurakum. Wa Ajurakum, inshaAllah. Wa Ajurakum, inshaAllah. And uh, as for your question, uh, prayer, especially concerning our hadith, it tells us that it's effective because if we keep on doing it at a constant time and not just do it when we want something. Mm -hmm. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith Qudsi that my slave, if you speak to me, I will answer you. So if we keep it at a constant pace and not just do it when we want to do it, which is usually the problem, mm -hmm. it is effective. Mm -hmm. And we do it out of love too and not out of desire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if, that's all I have to say. Yeah, but the one thing you mentioned earlier is about nah. you know constant, constantly praying to God. If a person prays once to God, will his prayer be answered? I mean, you you can say yes, it's answered. Allah's answering his prayer no matter what. Mm -hmm. But uh, once is not enough, right? You have to establish a connection. When you're in yeah. love with somebody, you're going to be texting that person, calling that person twenty four seven. Yeah. You know, if you yeah, the girl that you like, are you gonna text her once and that's it? You know, it's you gotta keep uh, the connection has to keep on going. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Muntaba so, from Canada, for joining Habib, us tonight. Uh, Beautiful thank answer. You thank much. you very much. Your name is written on the slip, and inshallah we place in the draw to win a free trip to Karbala once again. Thank you, Muntaba, for joining us tonight. Now, going back to tonight's question, how effective is prayer? So, just like Muntada, he mentioned to us that there's needs, there, there needs to be a connection with God in order for someone's prayer to be effective uh, and to have an effect on um, his life and, or on the situation that uh, he may be in. Now, we do remind everyone to participate by uh, calling via WhatsApp, so it's toll-free. You don't need to spend any money toll-free. 
uh, by sending us a voice message, text message, uh, or calling via WhatsApp, or commenting on our live feed on Facebook as we are live. Now, a lot of people, they sometimes wonder how powerful is prayer? The power of prayer or prayer has the most powerful connection and has the most powerful form of energy that man can ever generate. If you look at a prayer and especially, especially if a person is going through a hardship where someone is oppressing him, Prophet Muhammad says fear that oppressed person's prayer because it can be demolishing for careers, for reputations, for, for anything. So that's very powerful uh, for prayer. Now, it also has a much wider role on our lives or in our lives than many can think or many can realize. You know, and especially in the present times when uh, we see the extensive, um, the extensive uh, influence of materialism in our world today, we see even religious people, all due respect to everyone out there, even religious people are not really getting the full understanding or are not understanding the, f the, the influence that prayer has on them or on the situation that they are in. So sometimes they become neglecting to, and they, they start um, resorting to other things. Now, as a matter of fact, prayer, as I mentioned earlier, is instinctual within our nature, within human's nature. And in times of distress, you know, either me and, and you know everyone out there has, has either done this once um, and I hope inshallah everyone does constantly pray to God but for those who have turned their attention to God only in the time um, when they're in distress, when they're in depression, when something is going wrong and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed that instinct within the humans to make them understand how important it is to, to create that connection between the man, between um, the woman and the Lord. And this is very important as well. Now the Quran has also noted about this instinct. Within chapter 10 verse 13, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, And when trouble befalls a man, he calls upon us, lying on his side or sitting or standing. But when he... Or, but when we have removed his trouble from him, he goes his way as though we had never, or he had never called on us for the removal of the trouble that befell him. Chapter 10, verse 13. This is very powerful because sometimes we're so caught up with this materialistic world that, you know, when, when we do fall into a situation, we pray to God, God helps us. Yet, sometimes we after that thing is done or after that situation is done, we tend to go back to whatever we have, we're doing before that situation, which is sometimes dangerous because you know you have to resort back to God one way and another or in sometimes later on. Um, but we did just get received, we did just uh, receive a text message from uh, Sister Razia, again from Norway. Um, prayer, prayers are effective. However, Allah has different ways of answering. If you pray for something, but don't get it straight away. It means that something better is planned for you. Indeed, Allah is the best planner, is the, is the best of planners. Thank you very much, Razia from Norway, um, for joining us tonight. Again, um, one of the um, constant uh, participants of hashtag LNC. We did promise a shout out to those who constantly participate, which we'll inshallah get to do later on in the show. But as I was saying before the break, one of the most important things that we need to focus on is not going back or neglecting prayer after Allah just removed um, our you know uh, depression or removed us from or removed a specific situation from us that really affected us in a very negative way but sometimes prayers are heard by not being heard now what do I mean by that I mean that prayer is heard but the petitioner and and sorry and the petitioner is being granted however there's one condition 
it has to always, as Razia mentioned, it has to be to his most beneficence, to his um, uh, betterment of that individual, for the most appropriate prayer. For example, if a person prays to God, you know, he's, he's driving that Lamborghini or whatever, or a Range Rover, and he prays to God, he sees a Lamborghini, he's not appreciating the car that he's in. So what he does is he starts becoming envious and starts wishing for that car. And if he doesn't get that car, he thinks that God is not listening to him, not appreciating the moment that he's in, which is very dangerous in, in, in a few moments. But um, we just received a text message from Ziya from Canada. He says, uh, bless you on these sacred nights. Bless you as well, Ziya. Uh, prayer is effective as long as Allah loves to hear our voices. It all goes back to us. Are we going, are we doing this out of, are we doing this out of want or out of love for our Lord? God bless the IHTV team and God bless hashtag LNT. Thank you very much, Ziyat uh, from Canada for joining us tonight. Okay, thank you very much, Ziyat, uh, for joining us uh, tonight. Now, once again, we go back to what we were talking about. A lot of people wonder when they do pray to God, their prayers are not being answered. So they, they lack the understanding and they, and they lack the complete wisdom and knowledge that God may sometimes, and I'll give you an example. If a person goes and, and, and prays to God, I want a million dollars, and he is expecting God to give him the million dollars as soon as he wakes up the next day. That won't happen. If it does, it's a miracle. And if it does, you probably find a duffel bag outside your door, which is sometimes you have to go give it back to the authorities. But it rarely happens. What God wants from you is you need to work for that prayer. If you wish for a million dollars, work for that million dollars. Don't, don't sleep all day and wake up all night playing games or do whatever and not working for that wish or working for that prayer that you've just wished for, or you just prayed for, which is very important for tonight. So once again, we do remind everyone uh, to participate uh, and join us tonight. Uh, now, we... Uh, the question for tonight is how effective is prayer? You can call us at plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six to let us know what you think if uh, prayer is effective or if it's not effective. Also let us know at that same number via WhatsApp. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions regarding to what I was saying earlier, mentions in chapter verse 217, it implies that the verse in the Quran says it may be that you dislike a thing while God uh, while it is good for you and it may be that you desire a thing which is harmful for you Allah knows the true nature of things and you know not so what what this verse is basically saying you know sometimes when we wish for something it won't really it won't it might not make us a better individual it might lead us to the wrong way it might deviate us from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't have that knowledge sometimes. You know, a, a, a specific example that a lot of people actually have prayed for in marriage. When someone is in love with someone, with a girl, or a girl is in, in, in love with a guy, all right, if a person is, is, is in love with a girl or a girl is in love with a guy, she is going to die for that person but yet that person ends up getting married to someone else then they fall into depression not knowing that God maybe has a, a, a better plan for you and of course in all ways God has a better plan for you so don't lose hope when things don't go your way because trust me when I say as as they always say there, there's a gold pot at the end of the rainbow this one or this one all right um, but uh, let's take this uh, message that we just received and after we can check uh, Facebook comments Sister Zena from Pakistan says, Prayer helps to build a connection with Allah. The line, Fistu wa Rabbul Ka'ba as 
Imam Ali said in a few hours, or said uh, 14 years ago, but in a few hours where he was struck, uh, is enough to show this due to the person who uttered those words while during prayer. Of course, Sister Zaina from Pakistan. Uh, oh, her name is, has already been placed into the bowl. Uh, so shout out to her as well as uh, to all those who uh, have joined us tonight. But let's go and see what the expert has for us tonight uh, and see how effective is prayer according to Sayyid Hussain Al-Qazwini. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. So how effective is prayer? It depends on the person. It depends on how how much effective you want to make your prayer. The Quran is very clear. إن الصلاة تنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر. Prayer helps prevent a person from performing sins, from doing evil. But does, is that effect necessarily on everyone? We see a lot of people that pray, yet they go ahead and commit sins and commit evil and listen to shaitan as well. Your salah is effective only as much as you allow it to be effective. It's like rain. When it rains, rain comes to all lands into all countries, into all places. But does everyone benefit from that rain the same amount? No. Some lands, their agriculture is so rich, the soil is so rich that it benefits from that rain. Another land, the soil is hard or the soil is non-existent. The land is, is rough, it's full of rocks. That land doesn't benefit from rain. It's the same rain. But you see one person, one land benefits more, another land benefits less. Salah is the same. You might see two people praying in the same masjid, praying in the same jama'ah. Maybe they're standing shoulder to shoulder. The same salah, behind the same imam. Yet one of him, his salah is so effective that gives him spiritual energy that allows him to be connected to Allah all the time, his mind, his body, his heart. Connected to Allah Azza wa Jal, this person doesn't commit sins. He guards his, his eyes, his ears, his tongue, his senses, his body parts from sinning. While another person, as soon as he leaves the masjid, the sins start. What's the difference? The difference is the first person, he benefited from his salah. He concentrated in his salah. He allowed salah to have an effect on him. While the other person, salah for him was an exercise. Stand up, sit down, prostrate, bow down, move his tongue. His mind was roaming somewhere else. He wasn't connected to the salah. So it depends. Two people go to the same salah and pray behind the same imam. Behind the same imam. It doesn't mean their salah is the same. Your salah is effective only as much as you allow it to be effective. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al tahirin Thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight, Sayyid Hussain Al-Qazwini. Uh, uh, one second, we do thank him for joining us tonight. Um, now, Sayyid Hussain Al-Qazwini also talked about a very important point, uh, which is also related to prayer. Another way of connection to God is Salat, prayer that an individual needs to um, have in order for his prayer uh, to be uh, accepted. Uh, and a, a great example, which is brought from the Quran, as he mentioned, prayer surely makes an individual go away from sins um, and, and wrongdoings, which is very important because if an individual is sincere in his prayers and if he wants his prayer to be accepted, one requirement of his deed being accepted is him keeping up the promise that he did with God in the prayer uh, that he did. But uh, let's read a few comments uh, from Facebook that we just have received. Now, uh, Ambreen Azhar, uh, 
She says, prayer is the most important duty as a Muslim to perform. No ibadat or dua is accepted if one does not pray salat. Okay, thank you very much, Ambreen Azgar, uh, for joining us tonight. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ambreen uh, Azgar. Now, uh, we'll go uh, through the other messages well very soon, but uh, a lot of people don't understand one thing or uh, haven't really paid attention to one thing regarding prayer. Prayer also has a psychological effect on the individual as well. Now, Dale Carnegie, um, this person right here, let, let's check him out. So, uh, Dale Carnegie, he says that I found prayer as the perfect way to conquer anxiety. Writing about the psychological benefits of prayer, and he writes, and I quote, even if you are not a religious person by nature or training, if you are, e if, even if uh, you're an out and an out skeptic, skeptic, uh, well, I can't read today. Well, uh, skeptic, prayer can help you much more than you believe, for it is a practical thing. What do I mean by practical? I mean that prayer fulfills these three basic psychological needs, which all people share, whether they believe in God or not. Number one, prayer helps us to put into, uh, put into words exactly what is troubling us. This is very important as well because the, one of the connections, you need to mention everything to God. Number two, prayer gives us a sense of cha sharing our boundaries, uh, uh, sorry, sharing our burdens of not being alone. Number three, prayer puts into force an active principle of doing. Three main principles that have a psychological effect in uh, prayer, which is very important as well. So, as you mentioned earlier, tonight uh, is the first night of, of Qadr, the first night of destiny. So what that means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Laylatul Qadr khayru min alf shahr. The night of destiny is greater than a thousand years, which is approximately, give and take, th thousand months, which is give or take 83 years. So, Praying on this night and supplicating to God and requesting from God anything you need with a sincere heart, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you a lot and will give, inshallah, will give you everything uh, you need that's in your benefit, of course. Well, that's it for tonight, you guys. Um, thank you uh, to... Uh, thank you to those who have participated in the episode uh, tonight. And we're giving a special shout out. We didn't get time to give a special shout out for those who are uh, constantly participating. But inshallah, in the upcoming episode, we will definitely, uh, because the names are written down. But inshallah, in the upcoming episodes, uh, that's it for tonight. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.